so we've got us a sub cooler, like a submarine sandwich cooler, that is not keeping very good temperature from what I'm told. So let's go in here and see what we got going on. This is the uh, little sub thing. Really, it's more condiments than it is anything. But you can see we've got the cold rails, what really it is. And it's currently working. The complaint is it doesn't work very often. And then she comes up and she kicks it about in that area, she said. They've got a pressure switch back here. So when she's hitting it, the pressure switch is making. What you have to do is climb back in there. And then, uh, so what I'm saying is, is she's hitting it, it's coming on. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn it off. That's gonna let the pressures come up. Then we're gonna go ahead and gauge up on it. The uh, pressures, most likely if it's low, is probably into a negative. So instead of sucking in some extra uh, air and non-condensables, we'll go ahead and get that thing up. And then uh, we'll see if it's low, we'll turn it on, see if it's low. And if it is, We'll probably just pull the refrigerant out, weigh it back in. It's a leaker, they haven't fixed it yet. They're not gonna fix it, obviously, so what's the point of wasting a whole lot of time on it? Um, at this point, we're just gonna get it going, and then uh, we can go work on an oven, which we got an oven over there we can go work on. This is the static pressure right here, and we're dropping down fairly quickly. Granted, the product's close to temp, I believe. She said it was working when we got here, so it's the only thing that kind of stinks. So here's the temperature deal here, which that's kind of hidden on the other side. Not anywhere easy to get to. Really a horrible design. Now it could be that junk switch down there too. You can see it's just one of them lightweight little piece of junk. Look like switch you'd use on a uh, fog lamp or whatever. Can't quite make out what the rating is on it, but usually they're barely enough amperage to handle it. I'd rather see a full-size man switch on there instead of those little pansy looking pieces of junk. And they're, they're just shut off for 4 PSI. That's uh, kind of down there in the lower end. Let's see if it comes right back up and immediately kicks on. If that's the case, we know we've got some issues. All right, it just immediately came back on. If it's gonna short cycle like that, that's gonna take that compressor out and run it into overload. So we've definitely got an issue here with it being low on charge. Uh, like I said, this is known for leaking, but they don't want to fix it. So we're just going to go ahead and get it, uh, or pull the charge out, weigh it in. It only holds 12 ounces. You could probably add three or four ounces and be okay, but I don't want to overcharge it. And I really don't want to have to calculate it and figure out exactly what, uh, what my operating pressures are. I just want to weigh it into the factory spec charge and call it a day. Not, not worth my time to sit there and spend all day trying to figure out something like that. We're pulling it down right now. Um, ended up changing the uh, Schrader core tool, the Schrader port right there. Uh, that other thing freaking went and uh, even pulled a vacuum on it. It was taking forever. So got that chopped out. Just used my hand torch since it's quarter inch. Just barely is hot enough. I was able to burn it in there with that little burger. But we're gonna go ahead and get this thing pulled down, recharge it. Obviously, I'm not going for a perfect vacuum. I'm not changing filter dryers, any of that stuff. They've been told this needs to be replaced. It's just a waste of time, waste of money. Uh, they know it leaks, and it just really is no point in doing any of the above. As long as the filter dryers, you know, filtering basics, that's about all we can do. Um, you know, if we're going for gold, fine, but for something like this where we know it has a leak, it's a consistent, continual problem, that's just what's the way it is. Uh, it just doesn't make no sense to waste any time or money more on something that you know has got issues like this. Eventually it's going to finally fry itself and then they're going to have to get a new system. But until then, you can see that the metal is rotting out. They have to put a pan down there to catch the water that drips. It's just no sense of putting a lot of time or effort into it honestly i hate sounding like that but that's just the way it is um, because they're a good customer uh, on a lot of the other things that we work on we're going to work on the stove i don't usually have to work on stoves but it's not that big of a deal so let's go look at that here in just a minute see if we get this done we recharged it back to the 12 ounces maybe went one extra one over kind of just watch and see where it ends up stopping at kind of where it hovers at See if it acts a little bit better. 
the uh, rails up here look like they have started to fall so we got a little bit of time there to where it's going to take a while to run so we'll be able to watch it and kind of get a better sense of what it's doing it's been running a good five minutes or so so we're holding pretty good in here at 12 pounds so as before it was dropping down to like four i think it was this is going to allow the longer run time and uh it should be good on that one we're going to go ahead and get working on that stove and then we'll come back and check it after we're done here's something you should realize if you can see it it's pretty kind of bright out here those are the power lines that's how much flux lines are given off there you can see it yeah it's picking those lines up off that so i'm sure that somewhere i know the big ones around here are going 600,000. that's probably 300 i bet something like that you can tell based off of how long the insulators are um, but i'm not for certain what that one is however um Living near one of these things is a good way to get cancer. Okay, so this is a TriStar oven. It's not one of the more expensive ones, but there's really no such thing as a cheap one. Now, what you'll notice on some of these cheaper ones is this kind of like the door's switch is not accurate. When you close it, it gets caught. So they have to literally. Yeah, this is a really cheap one compared to a. Um, trying to think of the different brands but yeah I'm not too impressed what you're gonna find is either the flame sensor is an issue or whatever they're saying that they turn it on sometimes it doesn't get warm so let's get this thing apart and take a look inside here and see what we got going on the only nice thing about these is the parts are so loose that they come off nice and easy chances are that's high voltage I wouldn't be surprised that's why they so easily yeah, see I got a lot of gunk down here. Not looking the cleanest in the world. Nice, look at that, you got a fake burner there. You only got, actually got, oh that's kind of a weird setup. It's really, you only got two orifices there. This is a little corny. How's that work? Oh, look at that. Okay, so they're using a U-shaped burner all the way to the end. That feeds all the way down there and then comes back this direction. I haven't quite seen one like that before. There's your pilot assembly. Uh, most likely we've got a plane security. We'll go grab the thermometer, the temperature probe, put it in there and see where we're holding in and see how far it's off. Now before we jump into that uh, temperature deal, here's how you adjust your doors. Those little aluminum deals there. Generally they are all out of whack like these are. See how out of whack they are. So we'll end up loosening up that nut there and there. We'll get it adjusted so it closes correctly and we'll throw some oil on there. See how we can get this maybe fixed up. If we're gonna do it, might as well do it all right. All right, tell me if this is a little bit better. Don't have to time it. Don't have to push the other door with the other hand. You just shut it. That's the way you do it. All I ended up doing is loosening that one, even though I loosened that one too, but this is the one I tightened up. I made the door pull in quicker. It can be very confusing. I recommend doing just one at a time, and a lot of times, I mean, one turn is all it took. You can see that aluminum's likely stretching along with the chain. So that should do a lot better than what it was. One of the few nice things about this being hot is all the fittings come apart easy. This one's actually easier than some of the more expensive ones. Granted, two 516 screws is all that holds that. And that eventually will strip out. Make good and sure that all that gets back together, sealed up, no leaks. The reason why I removed that was to make it a little easier. You could have bent this around but you can see it's been bent before and I really don't want to take a chance of it uh, possibly kinking and breaking. This one here it's a combination of flame and spark combined. You can see that it's kind of dirty there. So it's not going to sense as well. So we'll go ahead and clean that up with a wire brush. Uh, we'll double check the pilot too. Oh look at that. 
there's a lot of what's probably going on just barely got a thread holding that in there so that's gotten really hot quite a few times sometimes these can be pulled out but i am real leery of finding out if this is one of them that flame sensor rod there sometimes they'll have it grinded down to a point and you can slide the wire on but i don't think this is one of those got that pulled apart you can see the orifice is right there one of the little tricks sometimes you can use is a straight head screwdriver go in there and you can usually break that loose it did allow it to pull out you can see right through it no problem it's the old wiper roo everything's good to go there so get that back in there and get her back in uh, this here, you got to watch out for that exposed wire because it can arc to anything that's closer to ground than what the end of that is, and that can cause the spark to not reach the end of the pilot, which could also cause it to not obviously establish a fat flame. This is nothing but, in all reality, if you really think about it, a convection oven here is nothing more than a gas furnace, an 80% gas furnace with exposed burners, ribbon burners, intermittent ignition pilot, and everything else stays the same thermostat just like a freaking furnace does it's really nothing special you have a door interlock which is just like a door on the blower and uh, high and low fan heat and cool <laughs> and then fan uh, light on fancy fancy that's about all there is so far let's see what else we got here see if this gets it or not i got the flame rod cleaned up looks a lot nicer it's just a stainless steel rod what i ended up doing was just twisting the wire so it kind of chokes up the wire so it ain't as much exposed. It's not the way I prefer it, but I'm going to slide this thing up. This ain't much of an insulator. It's not made for spark insulating, but more heat. And obviously, it must have moved because it didn't protect the wire much. Uh, sometimes this is one of the things you get some of the cheaper brands out there. You can just tell it's it's a total clone of Bloggit. Bloggit's what I was trying to think of earlier. They only got one glass instead of two glasses. Um, they look nice at first when they're new, but you start seeing real hand, first hand real quick where things are different. Just lighter weight hinges. You can just tell how thin a metal that is. It's not near as heavy as some of the bloggets are. Went ahead and blew through the orifices there, made sure they were wide open. We're good there. Let's see if we can get this back into place. Like I was saying, that kind of one underneath there that raises up connects together just like that all right so like i said we got everything back together the burners look like they're adjusted properly you've got your air shutter right there if it was on propane something like that you'd adjust that you know they're they seem like they're open wide like they're supposed to be you see that same thing there the burners appear to be burning pretty good you can see that front burner there and you can see how it kind of loops over and back again sort of that yeah, looks pretty clean and clear I don't see nothing dropping out the pilot that looks pretty healthy there what we've got we've got a special thermistor here built for ovens the part number on it I always I really really like uh, Cooper Atkins products that's the part number of it um, I've got all these things usually listed in my tool links down below. We're using the Fluke 52 too. This is a neat meter, but you don't have to have something this fancy. But you definitely should have something like that if you're going to be checking ovens out. It's built to withstand the heat. We're set at 350, which is usually a common point. 350, 425, whatever. We're going to see if where we are at on it. We're going to see if it's accurate. Sometimes on the back of these, they've got an adjustment that you can adjust to calibrate it. I did put the sensor uh, on the inside at the very top, real close to the probe, the bulb, and we're still cooking along. Uh, we did grab some spray. We're going to spray that, make sure we don't have any leaks on that union. Last thing I want is a leak inside the oven. Check out there too, because I don't want. If, you never know, the last yin yang could have came through and got stupid with it. Yeah, see, we actually got a little bit of a leak right there. 
So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can tighten that up a little bit more. Probably would have never noticed it, but we'll go ahead and tighten that up a little more. I'm gonna have to take it apart and clean the mating surfaces on there because that's not uh, getting any tighter. It's as tight as I can get it. We are just about ready to shut off here. Now what I'll do is I'll hit my min max and it's gonna fluctuate. Usually the ones I've worked on before, are usually about five degrees, some more, some more or less. You gotta remember, I don't have any books on this stuff. It's just using your common knowledge of what you know from a gas furnace and just go from there. Yeah, that's the reason why that freaking uh, igniter there got burned up so bad. Is that like right on that that thing? Not a very good good design. There, it just turned off, and we're at 358. Now look at it's starting to lose temperature already. Now this is a cheap one. This is a, a regular bulb, mercury bulb, bulb style. Uh, some of the nicer ones have actual thermistors. Let's see, uh, see what our min max is here. Watch this for a couple cycles, then we'll get that taken apart. We're kind of cleaning that up. You can see the gunk in there. So you get that all cleaned up in there. Get the wire brush on it, clean that up. And then I may put a little something on just the threads, never ever on the mating surface. The mating surface, that's the reason why they got brass there brass is supposed to kind of squish up against the metal here which I've already cleaned that metal up but we may uh, put a little bit of pro dope there on just the threads to help lubricate the threads only never on the mating surface it's a good way to have a leak I got it back together cleaned off any residue there let's go ahead and see if we get this thing turn up a little bit let's go to 375 here let's see if it'll call Yeah, maybe I'll go to, let's go on up to 400 there. Yeah, it's not the most accurate controller in the world, but it was holding the 350-ish area. Now that it's running, we can check it. The leaks. There we go, let's watch it for a minute. It's been a good couple minutes. We have no no bubbles at all there so we're good to go there and it appears we're holding pretty good on our temperature we got up to about 395 we're set for around 400 it's down to 386 so as good as I can expect for a uh, old-fashioned mechanical thermostat I'm gonna recommend we probably replace that pilot assembly I really don't like the way that is but who knows they may not want to mess with it We'll get the uh, information here. So we came back out here and everything looks good on it. Everything looks fine, so it seems like it's working pretty good. Kind of go from there. We came back over here and we're looking at it. We are at 370 area. It still hasn't came on yet. Can't help but wonder, maybe this is what they were having problems with. Maybe we'd come up to temperature and it'd never come back up. Let's turn this thermostat up. It came on as soon as I moved it. That's quite a difference but look how fast that thing can bring the temperature back up to me it kind of sound sounds like you might have a thermostat a little out of whack I'm gonna recommend we do the thermostat and the pile assembly that, that seems like it should be a lot more accurate than that oh, oh shit we're like oh. yeah well, the Klein held up pretty decent I kind of didn't realize that, that kind of happened but yeah. Look at that. No, no stick. That's great. <laughs> I left it in there when I was working on it. Well, guys, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook. And then until next time, we will catch you guys on the next one. Later.